Hey guys, OGL Bina here, bringing you guys our BBR Season 5 Week 3 battle against J-Bear and his Graveyard. I was going to say his Dull Graveyard. Um, if you guys enjoyed today's Pokemon Draft League Wi-Fi battle, be sure to drop a like on the video as well as subscribe to the channel. We are on our new goal to uh, 3,000 subs, and if you want to help me out in reaching that goal, I'd appreciate it a ton. Um, and yeah, with that being said, we can go ahead and jump on into the team builder. I do want to do a quick little team builder just so you know. What we're bringing why we're bringing it so you have that background knowledge and context going into the battle if you want to skip ahead to the battle there's a timestamp on the screen and in the description below on when that starts okay that being said let's do it finally at the top of your screen you're going to see our team which consists of great tusk terra water and fire iron moth rotom wash screen tail fortress hydragon talon flame gothitel breloom ursaring and spide ops while our opponent's team is at the bottom of the screen and it consists of Garchomp, Libero Cinderace, Terra Dragon and Electric Backscalibur, Gengar, Klefki, Rotomo, the Dunsparce, Heracross, uh, Quagsire, and Driftblend. Now, biggest threats off rip to me. Cinderace is a bit of a long term issue. I'm not bringing the Talonflame, which would stuff um, realistically most of its coverage pretty darn well. Um, and things like Rotom, while they do check it initially, really, really have a trouble. Uh, and getting worn down by consistent libero u-turns and a high jump kick and then basically to it KO'd. So that Pokemon can be very difficult for me to switch into. Garchomp is another Pokemon that I kind of struggle with. Dual steps can be pretty scary. Like an SD Lumberry variant could be pretty darn uh, terrifying or even special or mixed sets, life orb sets. There's a ton of different things that it can do against me that really, really terrify me. Backscalibur is an issue, man, whether it be Terra Electric, Swords Dance, Dragon Dance, all that stuff. I think Swords Dance Terra Electric is probably the best set versus me just because it can kind of exploit most fortresses, um, hit some things really hard on my team, shed its bad defensive typing against my squad in Dragon and Ice, and throw off big Terra Blast and Ice Shards, and really that's all it needs in this matchup, to be completely honest. Um, so that's scary. Gengar, no switch-ins for, not fun. Heracross, also pretty annoying. And then um, Pokemon like Klefki, the Dunsparce, Rotom, Quagsire are a bit annoying, but nothing we can't handle. Um, they can be pretty annoying pivots to some of our offense, but I feel like this matchup in general is incredibly offensive and is going to go very, very fast. And that's kind of how I build the team. It's fast and loose, and uh, yeah, we are ready to go. Alrighty, that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into it. Our first Pokemon on the team is going to be our Iron Moth, rocking out the Lumberry uh, Cork Drive as its ability. Fire Dance, Energy Ball, Dazzling Gleam, and Agility. We are Terra Fire this week for the first time. Rocking out with 48 Defense, 28 HP, and 252 Speed. Really timid nature. We have enough Speed to Speed tie the Gengar, which, because we're obviously going to do that. That thing's absolutely terrifying. Um, we have enough Defense to live a Double Edge from Cinderace. I didn't mention, I think Swords Dance, Libero, Double Edge, Cinderace with Quick Attack absolutely runs my fade um so i want defense investment to at least live one double edge from full from that thing um and yeah this thing's gonna go pretty crazy in this matchup if you look at this guy terra fire plus energy ball and dazzling gleam just tears through his team rips him a new one uh dazzling gleam for the guard chomp energy ball for the quagsire and then fire dance for just about everything else minus the cinderace i guess but it's probably gonna be changing its type a lot we are lumberry for the klefki there are many instances in which i wanted to use this to kill klefki but klefki was able to get off a last ditch thunder wave against me pair me and then I was in a bad spot, so I wanted to be able to shake off that paralysis and kind of go from there. It can help out with random yawns or a glare from the Dunsparce or plenty of different things in all honesty. So I think Lumberry is actually pretty clean here. Um, the hazards are a bit annoying, but I'm going to be using this as a breaker pretty early on, hopefully anyway. So not too worried about that in all honesty. Next up, we have our Hard Dragon rocking out with the Choice Scarf. Dark Pulse, Draco Meteor, Earth Power, and U-Turn. We got 176 HP, 164 Special Attack, and 168 Speed with a Timid nature now what are we doing evs wise for this guy we have enough speed for backscalibur we live a plus two ice shard from full which is pretty darn cool and then we have the rest of our special attack this thing is going to be kind of an aggressive pivot in a lot of things things like gengar we can take a non dazzling gleam and i believe some focus blast variants and things like that um we can take garchomp eqs obviously and pivot and aggressively on that we can go ahead and take um, a Backscalibur hit. It's a Scarfer faster than the Cinderace. It bases in the Klefki so we get in our Iron Moth or our Great Tusk or whatever it may be. It's it's going to have to be used very aggressively this game, but I think it's solid nonetheless. It's also faster than a plus one Heracross, whether it be Scarf or Trailblaze, which I did see Trailblaze um, AV in a couple mocks, which means I can hopefully, you know, revenge it with a little bit of chip with a Draco Meteor, depending on the set and the variant. So I think Hydra is going to be very, very important in this game. It's, um you know, a scarf that's also faster than the plus one back. So if it's DD backs, I'm able to outspeed it and kill it. Next up, we have a Heavy Dude Boots uh, Great Tusk here. Pretty bulky set here. Photosynthesis as our ability. 
close combat, rapid spin, earthquake, and play rough. We got 28 HP, 48 attack, and max speed with a jolly nature. EVs wise, we are tying back Scalper. We live a plus one ice school crash in the back Scalper. And then we have the rest of our attack right here. We honestly don't need that much attack to do a ton of damage to a ton of things on this team. We originally had Ice Spinner because it hit the Rotom and it also hit the Guard Chomp. It's very, very hard. But Play Rough gives me a nice mid ground between Guard Chomp and Heracross, being able to hit the Heracross now. Um, and Close Combat's still gonna chunk Rotom. So like Rotom has the biggest longevity in the world. And uh, we have a couple of decent pivots into the Rotom as well. So I can honestly see it not coming. But yeah, this Pokemon in general does very, very well this game. The dual stabs are not very well resisted. Um, again, Ice Spinner would have been nice for Drifblim, but also not a Pokemon I'm overly worried about. And I think if a Ghost comes, it's definitely going to be Gengar. I don't think both come into this matchup. Next up, we have our Fortress. We're running out with a pretty offensive set. Gyro Ball, Explosion, Earthquake, and Spikes. We get the leftovers as our item. Sturdy as our ability. EVs wise, we're rocking out with 248 HP, 176 attack, and 84 uh, defense with a brave nature. Now, our attack investment is to kill Gengar from full. If we can take a hit from that thing and we're in a bad spot, we're out of sturdy, whatever it may be, if I can stay in and click Earthquake and knock that thing out, I'm in a great spot. Now, the rest is just an HP plus defense, which again makes sense. I know this seems weird to run off into Fortress just for Gengar, but really it helps with a ton of things. If that Cinderace wants to switch in aggressively on me getting up spikes or gyro balling or whatever it may be, I hit that thing with a brave EQ, it's going to do a ridiculous amount. It's actually a roll to kill no bulk from full, which is awesome. So a tiny bit of chip and it is dead to EQ. Um, EQ for the, um, an adamant EQ for the Baxcalibur too, for Terra Electrics is awesome. Earthquake and Explosion should always kill that thing, um, which is, again, great. Gyro Ball is going to be great for those speed boosting threats, um, like a DD Bax if it's like Terra Dragon. Um, that's obviously going to hit it a lot harder. Gyro Ball also hits Heracross decently hard as well. And there's a lot of things we just naturally take hits from. We don't take hits from Mons on the special side anyways. And the physical hits you need to take, we already take with, you know, just this investment. So I think an offensive spiking fortress is actually going to be pretty darn solid in this game. Next up, we have a Choice Banded. Breloom rocking out obviously with the choice band mock punch bullet seek close combat and aerial ace We got max HP max attack and four defense with an atom of nature pretty simple We don't need to creep anything on this name if things are gonna be faster They're gonna be faster if they're gonna be slower They're gonna be slower this bulk is gonna allow us to hit live weird hits that we typically would maybe a hit from guard chomp Maybe a hit from a non sludge waving Gengar Hit from Klefki um, hits from Rotom, hits from the Dunsparce, hits from Heracross even as long as it's not Aerial Ace. We can live a close combat pretty easy. And this Pokemon is going to basically just get one unless the Drift Limb comes every single time. We have the Aerial Ace because I want to be able to at least O-code that Heracross. Though I will say in a mock, I actually got a 5-hit Bullet Seed on the Heracross switching in. And I killed it from full. So Banded Breloom is not to be trifled with. I really like the Banded Priority too. Or things like Cinderace, or things like Garchomp, or things like non Ice Shard back Excalibur. I'm gonna be able to hit them very, very hard. Other than that, close combat bullets he hits things very hard on this team. So, um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for Breloom. And then lastly, we have our Gothitel. Pretty interesting set here. It's rocking out with Stored Power, Calm Mind, Rest, and Foul Play, Chesto Berry as its item, 248 HP, 176 defense, and 84 speed with a bold nature. Now, what are we rocking out with when it comes to Big Iron Moth? Or Big Iron Moth. Big Gothitel. Um, pretty interesting set, because first you're gonna see that he doesn't have a Psychic. So this set will really exploit any kind of team that um, ends up being a little bit fatter or pass more passive. And I think that's another reason why he has to go very offensive, because if he brings like those bottom four mods, or like those, that Klefki, that Dunsparce, that Quagsire, and even that Drifblim to an extent, um, I can really exploit them with something like Gothitelle and kind of just go for game from there. And that's kind of what this Call Mind Sword Power rest, play, rest stuff is for. Uh, but the offense, I feel pretty comfortable just having Foul Play for. And what Foul Play does for me over having something like Thunder Wave, whatever it may be, um, it's going to allow me to, you know, more reliably, you know, pick off some of these threats. If I can level plus one back Scalibur like non Terra Dragon hit, I can, you know, do a ton of damage with a foul play. Put in range of mock punch. Same thing with like a Swords Dance Guard Chomp or even just a Cinderace trying to set up a Swords Dance on my face. These Pokemon that think I might be a little bit more passive and slow with a Calm Mind Stored Power set are really not going to appreciate that foul play to the noggin. And that's kind of what I'm hoping from Gothdale here. It can set up and, you know, be that exploitative destroy fat and even win the game Pokemon, but it can also really deter a lot of his physical offense, which I think is really awesome. But um, yeah, that is going to be the team. Uh, I will be right back with the battle. Hey guys, really quick, um, I forgot to click the record button when the game started, um, so I didn't get like my analysis of his team out and like, you know, why uh, I'm gonna be leading my Hydreigon, things like that. Basically, the team Jaber brought was very offensive, like we thought, very offensive in nature, um, and I saw no Klefki, and I thought because of that, 
Hydra lead was very, very free because it led well into like Hazard's Guard Chomp and a bunch of different things that I expected. Um, so we ended up leading off with the Hydra. And uh, yeah, it kind of starts off right there. You didn't miss too much. All right, let's jump into it. I'm recording late. I didn't click the record button, but we got in before turn one. Thank God. Um, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Don't worry, guys. We're all good. <laughs> okay, I'll probably do like a preamble before the actual battle. That was really dumb. I'm so glad I caught that. I am so, I am so glad I caught that. Um, we got Cinderace and do Hydreigon. Now, if I Earth Power, I don't really pick up a KO. I'm just going to U-turn. I don't expect a Scarf here. Um, yeah, so we are going to U-turn. And that should actually be very close to Draco range pretty soon. Um, Cinderace here into what? I think we always just go Tuskingtons, right? Tuskington's pretty free. Especially if he high jump kicks. He's going to just U-turn. That's fine. He actually doesn't have great responses to this Pokemon immediately. What, he can go Gengar? I mean, so we saw U-turn. So he's probably not the Yes D set, which is also good. We know he's not Scarf, which is also good. Um, Bax Calabroke. I mean, what I do is I always just go Fortress, right? If you start Electric, I'm good. Tear Dragon, I'm good. Yeah. We always make this pivot here. Um, and I actually think I throw off an Earthquake. Because if I catch that Cinderace from here, I'm in a really good spot. Yeah, because we're, like, offensive. He's going to Terra. We're going to see Terra Electric. Now, provided I get off an Earthquake, he should be in range of a Mach Punch. Yeah, because he's Terra Electric. Perfect. So, we see Baxcalibur. Blizzard. Interesting. Life Orb. Interesting. I mean, I'm just going to throw off an Earthquake. I don't really value the spike right here very much. Because if you also stay and give me damage on this, I'm in a good spot. He's just like Life Orb mixed? That's interesting. He's going to withdraw. Maybe I should have spiked, but... Oh, dude. Fucking free. Um, amazing for me, in fact. If I can get this roll, I'm chilling. Awesome. I mean, I will take it. That's incredible for me. Okay, this thing's mad chipped. Um, I actually think what I want to do... I think I'm going to make a pretty aggressive pivot right here into Hydra. Yeah, I like the aggressive Hydra. I mean, he could... Ah, no, he could U-turn. That was dumb play. That was dumb play. That was dumb play. That was dumb play. Super, super dumb play. I mean, I, I think he should Pyro Ball or Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, okay, we're good. Ow. Now, from here, it's just a Dark Pulse. It's a pretty free Dark Pulse, actually. I'll take it. Now, we'll just click the button here. Maybe we'll just click the button here. Uh, I'm a little scared of the Gengar, but we should be okay. He's going to withdraw and save this thing. He's U-turn Pyro Ball. Crisscrossed. So, Dark Pulse, are you Guts? No guts. Okay, so I want to see something then. Great tusk. And the hair across. Um, why does it say Flame War Burn? Healthy. Not Flame War. Let's just say, uh, no, not Fighting Gym either. What am I at? I'm at 354. Um, not a very high chance to it KO, so I'm just gonna go into, uh, what do you call it? Tusk. No reason not to. No reason not to. So, 354 down to 189. What is that? 
354 minus 189 is 165. So part of me really wants to earthquake calling that Gengar. I think I am going to earthquake calling the Gengar. I'm calling Gengar. He just doesn't. Okay. Interesting. I didn't think that was what he would do. Interesting. I mean, how fucked am I? How fucked am I? How fucked am I? I mean, he's gonna CC again. If he's minus two, how much does my Braylon do? It kills. Okay, I'm just gonna sack this then. I did not think you would just sack that. That's super crazy. All right, if he's minus one. He's Moxie. I'm super interested to see why he didn't just, like, why he let me kill that with Play Rough. Um, he's plus two, so I do have to go Braylon. Uh, and we're banded, so we guarantee kill. So we knock him out. Okay. I mean, that's good. Down it goes. I do be struggling with the backs a little bit right now. But it's okay. We need to keep this around, too, for the done. Because I just don't deal with the done very well. Um, this is a pretty free neutral Dazzling Gleam. So I'm actually going to make a pretty aggressive pivot right here, I think. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make a pretty aggressive pivot here. Yeah, I think I do. I'll do it. I think this is a free Dazzling Gleam. And I don't think he prepped for Bear. So I think he's gonna be Dazzling Gleam. The Moth. Gengar. Sludge Bomb. I mean, that's fine too. Um, my play here. So, let's actually see. 230 down to 301. Um, so that's 71 points of damage. I got the time to calc. Might as well. Not specs. Um, and if we Terra Fire... We actually have a good chance to kill, potentially. And I, I really value the KO on this thing. Chomp down. Ah. I mean, are you going to be Scarf in this matchup? So we're going to tear a fire. We throw off this fiery dance. No boost. Um, how do we want to play this? <sighs> what do I click here? If we Terra Fired there. It's not max HP. It's not a bulky chomp. It is not a bulky chomp. I mean, I don't kill here. That's the only tough part. And he has a pretty free Dragon Claw. I think I'm actually going to use this as an opportunity to sack off. Um, or get in my goth. Let's see. Dragon Claw. Can I call mine? I mean, what? What is that? What is that? A 3 8 KO? A three hit KO, four hit KO. I mean, I'm just gonna take my damage on this because getting rid of this thing if it's scarf is so big for me. So it's not. Okay. I mean, rough skin hits there, and we're gonna die here. I mean, just foul play again. 
if he wants to set up rocks or something. So we go down there. Down we go, down we go. Um. Now from here, what's my play? Is it to go Hydra? I think it's Hydra, right? There's no Heracross anymore. Yeah, no more Heracross. I'm doing it. Don't look at the button. Um, I'd like to see how much this does. I mean, can't I just Draco for free here? Draco's super free. I just click Draco. He's going to withdraw. What's he going to sack? Is it going to go hard to done? Oh, he sacks back Excalibur. I'm fine with that. Or kind of sacks back Excalibur. I think it'll actually lift this because it's not a dragon type. Yeah, it actually eats. We're going to go out into our fortress. Ow. So we see a Terra Blast. Is this going to do it, Kaomi? It's not. So it's going to lose some of its HP. It didn't show me the HP number. Um... Which is pretty funny. Is it worth just spiking? I'm just gonna spike. Yeah, I'm just gonna spike. This is terrible blast again. Now, here, I want to cover the aggressive Syndra so he can't court change on me. I want to cover the aggressive Syndra so he can't court change on me. So, I'm actually going to just Earthquake on this turn. He does drop a big Terra Blast. Did he die to Life Orb here? So, we go down. Put down a life orb, please. Okay. I mean, it's fine. What we do here is we always go moth. We just bait a fiery dance boost. He can ice shard if he wants. Dude, imagine if I agility like a demon. It would have been a terrible play, but imagine if I agility like a demon. I should have. I'm super pussy for that. It's all good, it's all good, it's all good. Okay. So what are we doing here? You're done. Let's see. Does this mod live? I mean, I don't think I live a Scarf Gar hit. I'm Lum, so I'm super okay with you trying to glare me. That does so much. Let's go. You try to call mind. It is not happening, because we still kill here. Perfect. This is a KO. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's see Gengar. We are terrified. We do die. You're done, fainted. We're at plus one. So, like, if he's not Scarf Guard to him, we win a speed tie. We can actually just win right now. <sighs> Free Libero. I mean, I'm gonna try an agility here on a sucker. If not, you just kill me with the high jump kick anyways. Miss, 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 mi
I'm so glad I agility. Don't be sucker. Don't be sucker. Don't be sucker. Be choice. Be choice. Be choice. Be choice. Be choice. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, it feels good. Oh, it feels good. Um, I was convinced like an SD set was coming against me. So we win. Yeah, we win. Custap doesn't exist, so he can't pivot around for Custap. Oh, Gleam. You die. We're at plus one. You're at zero. Yeah. <laughs> that does not live. Let's go, baby. Big dubs. Huge dubs, in fact. Huge. Cool. So we take it from J-Bear. That was a pretty unlucky uh, gunk miss. If he was um, Scarf Gengar, then that kind of lost him the game, potentially. Because I think I probably lost to Scarf Gengar. Um, we Fire Dance, and we pick up a dub. Yeah, if he was Scarf Gengar, then I think I lost. If not, I think Hydra actually cleaned things up. Um, I'm pretty sure Hydra cleaned things up, because I lived a Bandit Sucker Punch from there, and I just Dark Pulse everything. So, if you Scarf Guard, then we we're screwed. Um, if not, then I think we are okay. I don't know. It depends. Maybe if we lived a Sludge Bomb, too, because um, I'm not sure if we did or not. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he actually didn't even kill me with Scarf Gengar there. So that was pretty tough for Jaybear, especially if he was Scarf Gar. Um, I don't know. We'd have to look. Sludge Bomb looked like it might have killed. It was a roll, and he kind of would have had to lock that, I think. Um, I don't know. The game obviously would have played out much differently, but I'll take the win. Uh, we needed to bounce back after a week two loss to Joey, so, uh, that feels real good. GG to Jaybear. Go check him out in the description below. Really, really cool guy. I, I always, I always rag on Jaybear, um, because he pisses me off a lot, but he is a really good kid. So, uh, definitely go check him out in the description below. All the other BBR coaches and all that stuff, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.